Okay, welcome. Gosh, I'm losing track of what week it is, Jill. Are we on week five? Week five? Week Are three? We? I'm not even sure. Yes. I think we'll have to have our, our uh, viewers let us know. Um, so welcome to Paint by the Pints. My name is Britt. Uh, we have Jill on the line as well. We're going to walk you guys through. Hello. Hello, yes. Um, tonight, we're walking you through a much simpler painting. Um, as per your request after last week's elephant, elephant was awesome, lots of detail, um, but we got we got a lot of messages four hours later saying, I've just finished. So um, we're giving you guys a bit of a easier one this week. Uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate that. So a few things to start. First off, this week was very busy for our team because not only have we full on launched all of our private virtual events and birthday parties, lots of corporate events, all that good stuff, but we also started selling our art packs. And so they actually, a lot of them went out today, which is really exciting. I'll show you guys what it looks like. So we come in a big package. Um, let's see, there is brushes um, and three different size brushes for all the paintings that Jill's doing with you. And you also get a complete set of paint, mm -hmm. acrylic paint. Um, and as well, we get our normal canvases. So exactly how you would see them at our events. They're um, 30 by 40 centimeter, which is kind of exciting because then you'll actually be able to kind of be just like you're at Paint by the Pines, no difference. And they're nice and big. So the package is quite, quite large as well that you'll be receiving. So that's, that can be found just on paintbythepints.com on our store. Um, okay, Jill, do you think they're ready to hear our big news of what's coming next week? I think they're ready. I'm ready. I'm so excited. I'm, yeah, I'm like buzzing with excitement right now. So um, I'll give you a hint. It has a lot to do with our friends at Guinness. Um, I know I was talking to Jill and some of the guys over and, and ladies over at Guinness. Um, we miss our Open Gate Brewery events as we miss all of our events, but it's specifically our Guinness I'm laughing here because I have like a thousand Guinness things, like I'm a walking Guinness advertisement right now. Uh, but because we missed those virtual or those actual in-house events at Open Gate Brewery, we decided to team up with Guinness on the next couple of events. So what this means is we are starting a virtual series with Guinness. I'd say the events will be um, starting next Friday is going to be our first event. We'll probably have them every two to three weeks. Uh, we'll let you know as things evolve. Um, but that means next week's event is actually going to be a ticketed event. Um, tickets are only 10 bucks. And the reason why is because we're giving out prizes and all sorts of fun things, um, including like Guinness hoodies, all sorts of merchandise, everything. And also paint for the pint stuff. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities to win prizes based on some of your pictures and creativity over social media. Um, so as every event right now, if you guys are set up, ready to go for paint by the pints, we want to see your setup, send in your photos. Uh, I hope that the woman that's painting on a ladder is here. That makes my night every night. Um, but let's see what else. So for the Guinness event, I'm going to put the tickets up later tonight. Uh, once they go live, you guys have access to so many really cool things. And what I mean by that is we're going to have the Guinness team that we have at Open Gate Brewery join us virtually. So I'm going to actually send you a shopping list, if you will. So when you sign up, you actually are told exactly what you need for that event. So it's going to run like a normal paint by the pints event that we do today. But the difference is we're going to be painting some pretty cool vintage Guinness paintings, usually like a John Gilroy classic that you see uh, in your local pub, wherever you are. And then the other cool thing is we're going to actually have some Guinness experts joining us. Um, so Jill and I remember we were telling you guys about when we went to the archives and we met um, a woman named Jessica Handy. She runs all the archives. We might be seeing um, her in one of the events. And we also might be seeing a few people doing maybe a Guinness tasting based on things that um, basically what you guys are interested in. So Definitely send us ideas, any questions you have for the experts at Guinness. Um, we're hoping to do some beer tastings and also how to pour the perfect Guinness while at home with no Guinness glass. I have heard you can pour a perfect Guinness in a champagne flute. I don't believe it until I see it, but our friends at Guinness are telling us it's possible. So that's our exciting news. We are absolutely crazy excited to show you guys um, the just 
new step up of an event that we're going to be doing, bringing you guys at home. Um, how do you feel about that, Jill? I am so excited. I, I just, yeah, I've got no words for it. I'm just so thrilled to be able to partner up with them. And I do miss going to Open Gate and, and I'm, I'm a huge fan. Like, yeah. mean, who is it, right? Yeah. We're like, we, as much as we are, you know, good friends with our friends at Guinness, we're also like massive fangirling over the fact that, you know, we just, we love everything that they were able to do for us when we were in-house at Open Gate. So being able to bring some of that to your house is always a bonus. So I'm ex really excited to share that with you guys. Um, and like I said, I'll put the tickets up either later tonight, probably, or tomorrow morning, depending on um, how things play out tonight. And um and then because it's a ticketed event, the following week will be free again, um, just like this has been. And then of course, if for any reason you're in a position that you're just not able to get a ticket, um, please let us know. We don't want to block you guys from joining our events. We definitely want everyone to be able to join and enjoy the fun and games that we're bringing every Friday to you. Um, so with that announced, um, I think we can get started for this week. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Cool. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am hoping to introduce this gorgeous little painting. So what Jill decided is this week was going to be a little easier. If right now you have tape in your house, so like painter tape or even just sellotape, um, it'll help you in this painting. And if you don't and you're seeing Jill put the tape on the painting just to make it easier, don't worry. You can totally get that same look by just leaving bits of room or even sketching out where you want your trees to go because we're painting these gorgeous work tree paintings. I love it. Um, so um, let me think. I might let Steven kind of do his thing for a second. We'll get our tech support to get it up. We have our Instagram. All right. I think we're ready. We'll start. Yeah, thanks. Hello and welcome. My name is Jill and I'm going to be showing you how to paint this cute and very easy birch tree painting. For this painting, you will need a few extra supplies such as painter's tape, an old plastic or stiff card with a straight edge to scrape with, your paint will be blue, yellow, white, and black, no red today. Our brushes will be small, medium, and large as always, clean water, paper towels, your palette, and our canvas in a landscape position. We're going to start with the tape and mask off sections of the canvas that will become our trees. Okay. We are laying um, down the tape from the top to the bottom. Sorry about the delay. Lay it down in various positions. Such as I a slight was just catching up. But as you can front. see, we are just laying down some of that masking tape or painter's tape. And as Britt said, you don't need to, if you don't have that painter's tape, you can just draw in um, or just kind of side up just different areas of where your white's going to be and then fill in the blue 
background uh, in between there. If you have a pencil, you can sketch in those 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 um, those tree trunks. Um, but the painter's tape definitely makes it easier. And you can I decided to leave a large have a few going up center, and down, some that are diagonal ones or twos crisscross, just to make it more interesting, and put a gap in um, that one area where I was going to put a piece of tape down, and then I decided that I didn't want to fill that space, and that's where I'm going to put that sun. Yeah, I think always with this, less is more sometimes, and you can always add a little bit in once you kind of see all the pieces of either tape this or will be the only time I'm together. using my red and that's yeah and this is the only point sun. that I'm using the red you paint draw your sun, for this course, painting um, there is, is nothing wrong with just to use that cap as a um, as a stencil then, for the sun um, you know whatever you have around you can just grab it and use it I am all for using the supplies that you're going to have around And make sure that you press down the edges of the tape to um, really, like I said, press down those edges um, because that paint is going to want to kind of slide underneath of that and you won't get a nice straight edge. And we're going to start with the medium paintbrush and the white is just going to be the sun, the center of the sun. It's good to do this now as well because you'll never get as pure a white color once we start putting all these darker colors in. Yeah. And then outside of the sun is going to be like a pale yellow and it's almost like that that light is radiating out of that center sun. And then if you find that that's too bright of a yellow just add some white on it to tone it down. I love that like eggshell color, it's so pretty. Yeah, and now we're gonna make some light blue paint, just blue and white. Um, my blue on this entire painting is very pure blue with some streaks of lighter blue in it. If you want yours to be a lighter blue, that's fine. You can even make it purple, like, it's up to you, really. It's your painting. I'm just giving you the base, and then you can take it and just run with it. So we're just kind of lightly blending in that light blue in with the edges of the yellow. If you overmix it too much, it'll turn green. So you don't want to do that. Um, but you do kind of, you don't want a stark edge. Um, and sometimes even if you have like a bit of white on your brush, like pure white, like clean off your brush and just go in with the pure white between the two colors, you'll get a nice softer edge. Yeah. And as we kind of start working our way out from the sun, we're going to go from the light blue to the dark blue and back to the light blue and then a little bit of the darker blue. Um, just to give that sky some movement, some depth, some substance, really. Um, I didn't add clouds to this painting, but you are more than welcome to add clouds. Like I said, you can really just take this whole background and make it your own. But all we're going to do now is just fill in that whole background. We're going to paint over that tape, and that tape is going to block the canvas from getting painted on. And then when we're doing, done with the blue, we'll pull that tape off. But, um, but yeah, for right now, we're just doing chunks of colors. You can soften those edges if you want. If you want chunkier colors, you can just throw it on and just do quick brush strokes instead of the long, soft brush strokes. It's really up to you.
I think this one, this painting is kind of fun because we're showing you how to do it in the simplest way, especially with the blue. But if I was trying to get a bit creative, I would probably even add, as I went further out, a bit of red to um, the painting if you have it and it turns it then like a nice purple color. Um, the other yeah. thing I was thinking as well is, again, if you wanted to get a little bit more definition, and again, you have to be careful with this because there's black already in it, but if you did the tiniest bit of like a speck of black with your blue, you'll get like a nice navy blue, but again, you don't want it to be overpowering because we're going to have lots of like the black in the bark of the tree, so. Mm -hmm. And as you can see just a second ago while you were talking, um, Britt, as you paint over your tape, the you'll notice that the edges of those tapes don't pick up the um, don't uh, take the paint right along those edges. So just make sure you get in there with your brush and fill in those little um, creases with the tape. Um, oh, and my other idea was that if if you are with your partner at home and you're both doing this painting, like you're you could do this blue sky or your partner could do like a, a lavender or even like an orange sky and make it like an evening where this is might be like a daytime you can take the same painting and change it to make it your own so you don't have the two same exact paintings at home yeah no that is cool and that's why I love the the one couple that always does um one huge canvas and has their bottle of wine in front of them for the for the night that's awesome yeah, that's fun. It's fun to watch their uh, their time lapse video of that too. Oh yeah, that's true. I love that. I'm looking at the setups on Instagram. There's some, as always, you guys are like professional paint night setter uppers. Like the huge. <laughs> there's one glass of wine here that, like, if there's any more liquid in the glass of wine, it might spill over. But like, that is a girl after my own heart. I love that. The wine, the wine just barely makes it into the cup. <laughs> That's awesome. I wonder if we have any kitties tonight. This is definitely one that after the event, you can share the link with any like little nieces or nephews you have because it's an easy one for them to complete as well. Definitely recommend doing that. Yeah. I know I'm going to do that with uh, my little cousins. Or pint-sized painters. My pint-sized painters, I know. I know. I think when this is all over, we're going to have to start doing kids events. That's what people keep asking us. Do you do kids events? I'm like, well, I guess we do now. We can. We absolutely. Do. Yeah. Our pint sized painters. And it's funny because when I, when I was talking to, I forget which company about, you know, paint by the pints, they're like, oh, well, you know, the name pint, it means alcohol. And I was like, or a pint of ice cream, which if, uh, one of my favorite sayings is, if you believe in yourself enough, any pizza could be a personal pizza. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, absolutely. It depends, it depends how, you, how you look at things, but a pint could be totally a pint of ice cream. It doesn't just have to be a pint of Guinness or cider. But, hey, listen, some people have a pint of wine tonight, so they're going to be very happy, and they're painting the name <laughs> very, very well. I'm very excited to see. I have a pint of Heineken tonight, so that's that's my drink tonight. Oh, and we have a kitty, Naya. Very cute. I'm loving this. Oh. I don't think that I, I'd get very distracted if uh, if I had to paint with a little kitty next to me. <laughs> I have a friend from the States, and she sent me pictures. She tagged me yesterday, I think, and her daughter who i believe is in second grade did the elephant last week oh. all by herself it looked amazing so it was sweet. so pleased you know what was great is um i'm not sure how many of you guys um saw on our instagram we posted today a couple from melbourne australia i'm probably saying that melbourne melbourne um so they did the painting this morning which was their evening time i guess tonight um, and oh, wow. I think they did the mountain painting, but I was like, how did you, how, how are you an Australian doing paint for the pints? I'm like, so curious to see how does it reach that far? But they were saying that they were on a family zoom and I guess they saw the paint by the pints pictures in the background. And so they sent the link over to, 
you know, their family in Australia. So we now That's have um, Australian followers. That's so awesome. My dad is in the States and my stepmom and they keep saying, oh, we want to do it. We want to do it. We don't have the supplies. And I just went ahead and I ordered them supplies from Dick Blick and I mailed them over to him. So now they don't have any Any, excuse. No no excuse (laughs) mom and dad. Yeah, exactly. And you can send them this painting. They can do it. This is a fun one. Sometimes it's nice to kind of play around with the different levels because it allows us to, you know, even on this very focus very much on the on canvas blending and we're going to have to give it a little bit of time to dry before we pull up the tape anyways um but i do know that everyone's gotten very good about having their hair dryer ready at this point we have it on the uh supply list when, it yes. out, when you get a ticket so so people are ready and at the go it's just as important as the paint <laughs> <laughs> at this point it is it is oh I can't get over how beautiful this cat is. We'll have to, I'll share it on our Instagram stories. Oh, in our chatting, we, uh, I think, what am I on the second, the, the second layer of blue paint? Sometimes with this paint, like whenever you paint it, it, looks very, very transparent. So you do have to kind of add a second or maybe even a third layer sometimes. Adding a little bit of white to your paint too will kind of help with that. But um, but just adding those layers just keeps giving it more depth and, and it makes it more interesting. That's actually a good point as well, Jill, is I'm picturing as people are painting this one, um, if it's going on really dry, as in you're just seeing a lot of brush strokes, add a little bit of water to your brush. Um, and also sometimes people get into the habit of mixing a color on their palette and then putting it onto the canvas. If you literally, just as you did, you just dipped your dirty blue brush into the white paint and went straight onto the wet canvas, that's where you're gonna get the most swirls and fun colors in this like depth look. And Jill's painting obviously is um, sp- yeah, specifically blue, but now is definitely a good time if you're gonna add a different color in. I'd say the only color I'd avoid adding in at this point is yellow, just cause it'll turn it, um, it'll turn it green and we're gonna put green on top of it already. So if you're gonna add a different color and you have colors nearby, you can add a bit of red. It'll make it more of a purple color in the corner. And I would add it like in the far bottom right corner if you were gonna add it anywhere. Yeah. This is so therapeutic. <laughs> I love this painting. We needed I love it last week, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah, I really worked you guys last week. <laughs> but I was proud of everybody. Like, I was beaming. My smile was from ear to ear looking at all the different paintings. There was some, like, incredible. I, I had a lot of people texting us on uh, Instagram and Facebook, probably at, like, 11.30 p.m., being like, should I quit while I'm ahead or should I add the details? And I was like, well, <laughs> I can't make that decision for you, but like maybe you can do some details and decide if you want to go ahead or not. And some people went so far off the, the you know, track that we had put them on that it, they created this whole new, very realistic looking elephant. It was incredible. So at that point I was like, there's no point in putting details on that because there's so much detail to it already. And the colors were incredible, so vibrant. Yeah. And that was, that's, that's the other thing. Like you can go back to that video. You can repaint that elephant in just in the grays and the whites and then just leave it at that. Like, yeah, there was somebody um, who was, who was painting it. And she's like, Oh, once I got done with the gray, like I wasn't sure if I even wanted to add the color, Yeah, but I'm glad I did at the end. But now you can go back and and do it all over again and you can either leave it gray you can change the colors you can change the designs um and that's that's what's fun about this yeah no i i completely agree and that's why when we're going through this painting even though there's 
definitely, um, it's, I don't want to call it easy because painting's not necessarily easy, but it definitely has less steps to it. Right. And yes. that's yeah. why as you go through, sometimes some of the simpler paintings allow you to be so much more creative because you're less bogged down by the detail and you're more kind of like, hmm, let's see where this takes me. Um, so don't be afraid to add color and uh, get a little fun. You can see here. Absolutely not. You can even make your leaves like orange and yellow and red and do like a fall scene. Like I realize it's not fall. Right. But it could be spring. I, I see some of the trees kind of starting to bloom a bit, at least where I am. Um, yeah, I know. I was curious to see where everyone is tonight. You guys going to have to tell us in, our, in the YouTube chat. Oh, we have new Ross. New Ross Wexford. Very exciting. It was funny. We were shipping um, our starter pack, our like our paint by pints um, art pack to like all over the country, even Northern Ireland. It's wild. That is wild. So we are pulling the tape off at this point. I'm probably going to have to pause it once we pull the last piece. That's off. fine. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> It's so nice and clean. It, it, like, I realize that trees aren't perfectly straight like that. But I think the, the, the details that we kind of are building on top of it, you kind of can look past that at that point, at the, you know. Yeah, exactly. I like your hands. <laughs> my Because I was pulling the tape off and the paint was still kind of wet. And then I just crumpled the tape up in my hands and then I got paint all over my hands. <laughs> I know. I like, don't know if I ever have a day that I don't have paint on me or yeah. on some of my clothes. I've got paint everywhere. The amount of times I've found paint like on my nose, on you know my ear. Um, these days we're not supposed to touch our face. We're supposed to be washing our hands a lot more. So maybe less so, but on a normal basis, yeah, I generally tend to have a lot of paint all over me. Um, I've just paused the video. And just giving everyone a chance to do their hair dryers. And, you know, if you have to <laughs> give it a good air dry by, you know, waving it around the air, that's totally fine. We'll give it a second. Um, and so while we're doing this, well, while we're waiting for it to dry, I should say, um, I want to go back to talking about the Guinness stuff for a sec. So this everything we're doing right now and you know jill can second this we want it to be for you guys for our paint by the pints community i know so many of us miss our normal events that we'd be doing in person some people are brand new and only joined paint by the pints you know last two weeks ago last week um but i think that by doing the virtual event with guinness it allows us to kind of open up a new a new kind of area of activity because in the first week we asked what kind of paintings do you guys want and we heard elephants we heard um, guinness toucan we heard all sorts of things so we hear your ideas we love getting your feedback and so please do send us in any ideas you guys have any um any preferences of what you want to paint there's a lot of john gilroy's out there uh and not even just specific to him he just happens to be some of the most iconic ones with the, um, with like all the animals and things like that. And it was funny because I learned this week, uh, fun fact about Guinness, which I'm sure you'll get loads of next week. But uh, fun fact is that Guinness um, advertising had to stop using the animals because it actually appealed to children. And so it was seen as like a negative trying to get um, children attracted to alcohol. So they couldn't do a lot of the animal paintings. So when I was talking to Guinness about doing some of the paintings that we'll be doing, they were saying that actually there are some John Gilroy's or some animal paintings that are not attractive to children. And I was like, well, which, which animal is getting snubbed by, uh, by the kids? Because they're all pretty cute. And apparently, um, apparently the oyster is not attractive to kids and neither is the crab. Would you have guessed that? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Like, maybe, what's maybe the oyster, oyster looks like a shell? Like, yeah. Like, what's not attractive about like going to the beach and collecting shells? And like crabs are 
I mean, they can be cute. They're they're delicious. So delicious. <laughs> Maybe that's it. The parents are like trying to make the kid have seafood and they're like, no, I don't want that. Maybe that's what it is. I, I'd say that's, that could be it. But I thought that was so interesting when we were talking through it. Um, but the good news is um, we have a good relationship with our friends over at Diageo and Guinness. So please do send us your paintings, ideas that you want, because it might just be exactly what we paint at our next coming up um, series with Guinness. So that's kind of exciting. Um, and even if I'd say you're not a big Guinness drinker, which, you know, it's hard to imagine, but it's, you know, it's a thing. I think it'd be a fun one for the lads as well. The ones that do love Guinness. So hopefully it appeals to everybody. And if not, you can have your heart set on uh, painting some pretty cute little uh, vintage Guinness ads. That's kind of the highlight for me anyways. I'm so excited about that. Yeah, me too. So, all right. I feel like everyone's had enough time to get their hair dryers and fan. I'm just picturing people fanning their canvases around in the air. If you are, definitely send us a boomerang of that. I would, I would love to see that. Um, all right. I'm actually going to keep posting some of these on Instagram as well. But I'll play, I'll play our video again just to give us um, time to catch up now. Let's see. What does Jill do next? What did I do? Brush? I think the black. So with the black and this, um, like how many cards, like plastic club cards, store cards, does everybody have in their bags? Like, then I picked this because like everybody's got one of these. Like I could have said, oh, you now you need a palette knife, but not everybody has a palette knife. And, but everybody's got one of these plastic cards. So, and with this paint, it's easily wiped off. So if you do go to TK Maxx a lot and you do like <laughs> use this card, yeah, like you can wipe it off. It'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> It'll be fine. They'll be like, why this is card this in particular, <laughs> This card never makes it into my purse. And every time I <laughs> TK Maxx, they're like, the card. I'm like, I do, but it's just never with me. Anyway, so as I showed you, I kind of pull it up to the camera to, uh, so you can get a close up. You're literally just lightly tapping just to accumulate a little bit of paint on that card, just the very edge of that card. And then you're going to put that card at the edge of your tree and then gently pull it out and up and away from that edge. Um, you can even put your finger on the edge of that tree trunk and then gently pull back and away. And it gives that's what gives that distinctive birch tree look to it is. That's gorgeous. Is that. That's a fun idea too. I'm trying to think right now of like, if I had to sacrifice a card with black paint and even though it wipes off, what would I use? It might have to be, I have a good super value card. That's probably what I'd use. Cause it's a good small little mm -hmm. size. Yeah, and at that point there, you see that it's not really, there's not a lot of paint on the canvas with that scraping. You can just add more paint to your card and just gently dip it in and to kind of give it a little bit more layer. And it's also, I noticed you're like kind of trying to cozy it up to like the very edge of the tree, just to give it the look that it's actually going around and not just stopping randomly at that um, right, not, that you see it. Right. but <laughs> even in giving it the slightest bit of like a curve up gives it that sense of going around which is oh amazing. kelly osborne is using her learner's permit <laughs> oh that's... my oh, first of all i was like kelly osborne's on our stream that is an awesome yeah that's name. awesome that's osborne awesome kelly name. Her first name is Kelly. Yeah. And I apologize if your first name is Osborne. <laughs> oh, Osborne Kelly. Oh, that's, well, that would be equally cool. Although I'm sure they get it all the time. Like, my name is Britt, but obviously my name is normally Brittany. And the amount of times they're like, ah, oh, hit me, baby, one more time. And I'm always like, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, fair play to you. She's passed her test. 
So you don't even need the learner permit. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well <laughs> that, done. <laughs> that is a huge deal. I'd love to know how many times, what is the average amount of times to take a test in this group before passing? Oh, I passed it on my, my first try. See, I feel like there's something in failing a few times before you pass. There's something like there's like a club that you get to join by failing multiple times. No, that's just called an empty wallet. <laughs> Kelly, or well, Kelly Osborne, Osborne and Kelly, did you pass on your first go? That is what we need to know. You'll have to let us know. Um, hopefully mm. not, because then she could be in my club. <laughs> did not pass on my first go. I found it to be impossible. But, um, oh my gosh. Okay. So at this point, I'm putting a new layer of tape down um, on top of one of the tree trunks so that when you do put the black scrapes on it, on like on, on the, the background, the, the tree that's behind, then you can scrape over that tape. It'll still be on that, that angle um, on the trunk and then it will look like it's truly behind that front tree. If I said that correctly. <laughs> but once we take that tape off, you'll see how that really kind of looks and it'll definitely look like it's behind that tree. And then we'll go back and then the layer on the tree in the front We'll just work all the way down and across, and then that's what will bring that tree forward. That is so cool. It's stuff like this that you learn how to do in painting that makes, yes, this is a simple painting, but at the same time, like that's a fun skill that you can use in something that might be a little bit more complicated or even more layers on it. Because um, I think trying to get perception in a painting is very hard sometimes. It's what makes it real look realistic at the end of the day. Yeah. And this is the point where when I was filming this, I didn't realize that I moved the canvas out of frame. So I'm just <laughs> painting along, happy as can be. La -da -da -da. <laughs> and then I go back and I watch, I'm like, oh no, like you can't see what I'm doing. See but off of the corner here. <laughs> I on, tell them. <laughs> the suspense is going to kill them. <laughs> what did you do in the corner? I, we're painting the branches. We are just going from the edge of the trunk and we're going out into the sky, thick at the trunk. And then as we kind of pull up and away, it just gets a little bit thinner. And then we kind of branch it out one way or the other way. And as I kind of work my way around, you'll see here in a second. Um, it's just, it's kind of like the zigzag or the Y shape. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just maybe one branch on one side, two branches on the other, or two on one side and three, wherever you can kind of fit it or wherever you feel like that space needs to be filled in, that's where you kind of want to put these little branches. And the other thing I'm going to add here, because again, I'm picturing us like, I literally am having flashbacks to standing in, you know, Pogue or Guinness or any of our event spaces and seeing someone like press really hard with the brush and it just goes really fat. If you give it the daintiest brush, a little bit of um, paint on your brush, and if you need, you can put a tiny bit of water, dab it off so that it's not dripping and it'll flow perfectly if it's acrylic paint barely touching the canvas and you get a very, very nice dainty line. Yeah, you need to be gentle with your brushes. They don't like being <laughs> scrubbed in. They don't, yeah. they like to be gentle. <laughs> yeah, I know it's turning into a yoga class now. We're being very gentle and peaceful. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's um, again, it's another technique that will help you guys in the coming weeks. So if you can kind of master it on this one, it'll help you next week for sure. So now we're gonna make some green for the leaves. We've got a light green and we're gonna do a dark green as well. Uh, we're doing the light green first and then we'll make the dark green because we will start with the dark green. So this way we don't have to 
wash out our brush. And with the small brush, with that, that rounded tip, we're literally um, just going to gently press it onto the branches. And I promise you, I'm gently pressing it onto the branches in that corner. Uh, it's just like a little cluster of leaves. Um, these are really small, thin, dainty branches. So you don't want this huge, massive amount of leaves on it because that's you're not at the top of the tree. You're just kind of taking a, a section of this forest of birch trees. So we're just doing the thin little branches in the center of the trunk. And it's, like I said, it's just, you're just gently pressing the edge of that brush down onto the canvas. And we're starting with the dark green first because that's going to be like, almost kind of like the shadowy part of those leaves. And then we'll build up on that with the lighter green and some yellowy green to give it some more highlights and depth. Uh, you can also put some of the leaves in front of your trunk and then that will make that branch look like it's closer to you. And then some of the leaves won't even touch the trunk and then you can make those leaves a little bit smaller and then that size, that smaller size will make it look like it's behind that tree trunk. Again, that's a good thing to learn just around perspective. So I'm looking at our social media as we're starting to build out the leaves. And I'm loving that we have a lot of the same people each week in building. So we have Ashley and Orla are back. That is awesome. Hello. And you guys are actually our featured story this week. Well done, you. <laughs> Best friends having a Galentine's night on Friday every week for the last four or five weeks. We've lost count. Um, seeing tons of different familiar faces. Oh, and we also have Paul. Our karate Paul's back. I love this. Uh, nice. Let's see. So Paul is from Wrath Down Ken Pao Karate. And as soon as this is all over, Jill, I kid you not, I'm signing up for karate lessons with Paul because... It's like on my bucket list. And now I'm like, if not now, then when? So that's happening for sure. Right. I'd love to know what other skills pick people are picking up besides, like we said, baking banana bread. Everyone's mastered that at this point. <laughs> I'd say so. At least next week, everyone will be perfect at pouring a Guinness. That is an important skill. <laughs> so... Here we're just putting in the light green and we're not putting the light green leaves in as heavy or as numerous as the dark green. And then now we're gonna add some yellow to that as just the highlight. And highlights are gonna be less than the, the, the light green. And again, the one thing I'd say with this painting is we've kind of stuck to the green specifically. Like this is going to end here. And I'm actually going to pause it on this screen. So you guys get a full view of it now. If you want to go in and add some kind of budding flowers, go for it. Add in your pinks, your purples, um, even kind of highlights of white will do loads for this painting because it's such a colorful one as it is and I think even adding a bit of pink and things like that will just make it pop so feel free to get creative I know everyone always ends up adding on things like Jill has anyone's painting ever looked the same at any other events ever <laughs> no 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 so for those people that are like 
I'm so sick of listening to instructions. I'm going off track. Go off track. Let's see what you guys can come up with. I'm more than curious to see. This is also a kind of a cool painting for people that are not painting, if you will. If like I know my aunt joins every week and she does gel pens. Um, so this would be definitely a cool one for gel pens as well, especially with the shading and stuff mm-hmm. of the bark. So go crazy. Have fun with whatever you want to kind of add on to it. Oh, by the way, in case anyone was wondering, uh, our lovely Kelly Osborne, she passed third time lucky, which is the same as me. So well done, girlfriend. I love that. That listen, first two times, not no, not happening. Second third time, yeah. So passing your driver's test is no joke. <laughs> well done, Jill, and passing on your first time. That's how Steven was. Our tech support is also a very good driver, apparently. Let's see. I just want to leave that up for a second. And then the other thing I want to show you guys is just, again, I'll show you if anyone missed it in the beginning, the packs that we have available. So you'll be able to see. Let's see. If I click. Okay, so I just want to show you guys really quick. Again, if you're getting our packs, you're going to get the full size. So it's actually quite big. Um, And it's nice because it will be the same size as any other Paint by the Pints event. We made sure to get um, this directly from our suppliers. They've been awesome, by the way. Shout out to every shipping company. I made best friends with our Fastway driver today. People are incredible, doing incredible things during a time that is very challenging in so many different ways. Um, I've heard so many crazy stories of, you know, nurses working insane hours. I know a lot of people that have, you know, loved ones in the same, um, you know, emergency room that they work in day to day and their father's there. Like there's so many crazy stories, but there's also so many good things coming out of this. Um, I know I was talking to Steven earlier and he was saying that his family's never been closer. They get to see each other via Zoom every day. I know I got to, you know, video chat with my little niece and nephew that I'm missing over in New York and New Jersey. So, so many positive things. Um, So definitely take the time to, you know, spend time with each other. You can share this link uh, because it's free. Open to everyone. Share it with nieces nephews it's a quite a simple painting they can get through it for sure um and as well if you're interested in the guinness event next week we're going to be launching that either tonight or tomorrow morning and um we have all the supplies here so the normal art pack is on our website it gives you two canvases um paint brushes the three three small medium large um and then again the acrylic pack but there's a lot of you that are actually painting every week. So we're thinking about getting the double size of this so that it's just a bigger pack. And as well, a lot of people are like, I, I need more canvases or I already have brushes, but can you send me X, Y, and Z? We can make a custom pack for you the best we can. So just get in touch with us. If there's something specific you're looking for, um, we even have people looking for just paint brushes, like seven sets of paint brushes. So again, get in touch with us. And as well, we're doing, um, Lots of corporate events. So if you're um, part of a sports and social committee, again, you can email me, message us on Instagram, whatever it is. We're doing very cheap and cheerful events just to keep people occupied. We can send all the supplies directly to each employee, directly to their home, and do a virtual event next week, two weeks from now. Um, Our calendar's been fairly busy, so just make sure you get into us early enough so we can make sure we can get into you. And it's been so wonderful working with... um, just the most amazing people coordinating to make sure that their their coworkers are happy and healthy and you know staying safe at home. So shout out to literally all of you. And I think last week I forgot to thank Stephen, our tech support. So I'll make sure I thank him this week. We do need you. Don't worry. Right, Jill? Would we be able to stream without yes. Stephen? <laughs> I don't no, know. not at all. Hello, I was Stephen. Thinking about that. Yeah, hello, Stephen. Shout out to Stephen. Um, so what else is there anything else before we leave you guys tonight i don't know i don't think so 
Any other? I don't think so. I think we kind of covered it all. Yeah. So Jill and I are gonna are gonna go because we got to go pick out some Guinness paintings for you guys. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, definitely keep um, keep an eye out on our Instagram over the next couple of weeks because we'll be kind of announcing the new dates as they go. But I know the first event for Guinness is going to be next Friday, May 1st. I cannot believe it's May already, um, but we are already in May time frame. So next Friday, May 1st, we're going to have some pretty cool special guests from Diageo. So definitely check it out, uh, share it with your friends and keep an eye on our page to find out kind of more information about what's coming up and what to expect. And um, we'll make sure that we have a bit of a shopping list when you guys buy your ticket. And just, again, I'll put up anything you guys need on our Instagram stories and Facebook. So you'll have access to anything and everything you need. Um, so I'd say if there's nothing else, we will love you and leave you on that note. All right. Until next week, which is a very exciting week. Um, enjoy. And remember, again, get in touch with us if you have any issue at all with um, the ticket sale. And as well, the following week will be a free event. So again, we want to make this fun, easy to join, and just open to everybody. So the whole family's invited. As always, all are welcome. And we're so excited to have you guys. So thank you. Thank you, Jill. I'll let you say goodbye. Thank you. And enjoy your Friday. I hope you guys are staying well and healthy. And we'll talk to you next week. All right. Bye. Until then, bye, guys.